And what is going on everybody, and today I am presenting all four episodes of The Way to Eternity in one episode. The Bushwhackers are drawn into the North Pole to help defend it from the Russian invasion, but are they really invading the North Pole, or are they after something else? Sit back, relax, and find out. And remember to like, comment, subscribe, and please be sure to share this video and all others with family and friends. Help the channel grow. That would be much appreciated. Thanks, and let's dive in. And what's going on, everybody? And we kick off Christmas week with our four-part special, The Way to Eternity. This is a story I've been particularly excited about making, and I really, really enjoyed writing the story. So sit back, enjoy, and remember to like, comment, subscribe, and let's get started. We open to a barren landscape in the Arctic, looming mountains covered in snow, the tundra whistling in the lonely wind, and the sea choked with ice. We see an army of stag-headed figures clamber up the slope as a woodland satyr-like figure walks over to a figure clad in orange holding a rifle. Well? Nothing, sir. There's no signal. Keep looking. They must be here. They must be. As the soldiers spread out, there is a flash in the sky, followed by a loud boom. They all look up to see an object whizzing through the sky, spinning upon re-entry. The soldiers take aim. Not yet. Let's make sure it's really them. As they watch, a space capsule crashes to the ground, and there is silence. As the soldiers keep their guns trained, the capsule door opens, but no one emerges. Krampus walks over, and waits. Eventually, the bushwhackers emerge, holding weapons. But he stops as he sees the soldiers aiming at their guns at him. Hey, guys. Ever wanted to meet the North Pole Welcoming Committee? Like a Suwon and JJ Armstrong look around. I don't know, they all have guns. He looks around and scratches his head with the Colt Anaconda. Why do they have weapons trained on us? The question of the decade. Bushwhackers. We knew eventually you'd return to Earth. Oh, cool. A talking caribou wearing pants. Huh. I thought it was an elk. But, mind you, all arctic creatures look the same to me. Racist. You will surrender, or you will be destroyed. That, I can most assure you. Really, Krampus? Sure you want to do that? Don't your masters need to sign off on that first? Krampus' face contorts into fury as Lee steps closer. What? Not sure what to do next? I think you're gonna need to radio it in. I'm sure Daddy could tell you if it's okay to play. I will annihilate you. Open fire! Shit! I thought that would really work! As he says this, the bushwhackers open fire in response and take cover in the capsule. <laughs> this is all going swimmingly well. I miscalculated, okay? Really? Who would have thought? Dude, shut up and keep firing! It cuts back to four days earlier, where we see Lee is in his apartment getting ready to leave for the weekend. He has his duffel bag near the door as he walks out, shutting off the bathroom light. Alright, gonna spend the Labor Day weekend in Raleigh for Anabacon, meet up with a couple of college buddies, and maybe see if Christine wants to meet up at the old college hangout, just in case. 
He makes sure he has his keys before he turns to the camera. It's nice not having to deal with any BS for a change. I spent nearly a month in a body cast, going through PT, and then I had to deal with vampires being turned into robots, former classmates now turned into witches, and all sorts of things. After a shitty summer, I really deserve this. I do. He sighs. Boy, is it nice to have a quiet one. Mr. Suchek. Oh, shit. He turns to see a willowy woman standing behind him. He quizzically looks at the door, which is locked. He then turns to the woman. I'd ask, but I don't want to. Lee Suchek, I come to you as an envoy from the North Pole. Okay. We've been fighting a war against Krampus and Black Peter. I'm sorry. We? Santa Claus and his army. Oh. Okay. Just making sure. They've been making incursions over the past few weeks with aid from a foreign power and are looking to consolidate their gains. We are losing and we need the Bushwhackers' help. Lee stares at her. Is there something wrong? Hmm? Oh, no, 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 no. It's just... It's just that I have plans to go to this awesome anime convention in Raleigh, and the three-day pass was, like, super duper hard to get a hold of, and I was, like, on a waiting list for eight months, and had to wake up, like, four in the morning to get it... He shows it to her. And here you are, spouting about a civil war in the North Pole. I mean, come on! And Christmas is another three months away. Can't you give it a rest until after Thanksgiving? I haven't even planned out what I'm going to do for Halloween or the Renaissance Festival. He looks at her. Speaking of which... You may scoff, Bushwhacker, but this is as real as any other war fought by mortal men. What happens here will impact the rest of the world. Alright, alright. I can see this is uber serious. Tell you what, I will have my associates look into it, and we will get back to you. Talk to the bald one. He's into crazy shit. Or the young one. He'll believe just about anything. But I really need to go. Before he can say anything else, he finds himself in the Hall of the Mountain King in the North Pole. He looks around and, and sighs. God. Damn it. He looks at the camera. You know what this is. I had to say this was all quiet, and BAM! This happens! Why don't I just shut up? I had to jinx it, didn't I? Zuchek? He turns to see Luca and JJ walk over. Oh, wonderful! They roped you in as well. Yeah. I was gonna go to Asheville when this elf lady popped up and said, Bushwhacker, I need your help. Yeah, and I was gonna... You know... Do my thing. You had nothing planned, did you? No, not true. I was gonna watch The Dirty Dozen. You watch that movie every other weekend, bro. That's less of an event as it is a bodily function. Must watch Lee Marvin turn 12 fuck-ups into an elite unit. Hey, don't you trash talk Lee Marvin. Bushwhackers. They turn to see the same elf lady who walks over to meet them. Excuse me, but can you please explain why the hell you think it was okay to just kidnap the three of us from our Labor Day plans? Two of us, really. 
screw you. And we very much could just turn around and head home. Really? It'd be quite a journey back. Gentlemen, I apologize for the abruptness of this, but time is a factor. She waves her hand and shows them the previous battle where they, they see numerous APCs and attack vehicles lumber in the midst, firing on the Nutcrackers and Snowmen as stag-headed soldiers on yetis bound through the snow, firing their weapons. Is this Empire Strikes Back or something? Krampus and Black Peter had been in a power bid to take o control of the North Pole from Santa with the intent of implementing their own policies. Oh, well. What do you know? A good old-fashioned coup d'etat. Quite. But they have been receiving aid, as you can see here. And our forces are barely holding. The Mountain King was injured himself in the last attack into the Thule Ridge a few days earlier. She walks over. Please. We need your help. Lee looks at the other two and sighs. What do you want us to do? I bet you want us to shore up your defenses, right? Oh, or go on covert ops. The elf presents them a piece of the APC and Luca grabs it. Well, for starters, we need you to find out who's supporting these two. And then? And then perhaps help in organizing our defenses and finding a way to disable their war efforts. The North Pole has always been a place of hope. If either one of them gains control, then that hope is lost. We cannot let that happen. Fine. We'll help. But I have to ask. Yes? Why call us? Why not the United Nations? <laughs> so you check, they only have observer status. <laughs> oh, so sorry. I guess I didn't know. We've heard stories of your legendary actions. In Oz, you defeated the Wicked Witch and restored order. Word of that spreads fast. Lee sighs. And also because of this ad. She shows him the ad on her phone. He looks at Luca. What? Bushwhackers. Guns for hire. Dude, I told you to take that ad down like months ago. Well, I'm sorry, but so much has happened this year that I just forgot. You forgot? I mean... You did jump out of a window and break all your bones. Isn't that the worst way to spend the summer? I'm so touched by your concern. Three weeks earlier, we see a battle is in full swing. The cult of the stag, led by Krampus, try to overrun a ridge. The snowmen, nutcrackers, and elves are firing. Santa is at Command HQ. What's the situation? We're barely holding the ridge, sir. He's already taken out the battery at Hill 221 and reporting casualties near the hundreds. Santa sighs and buries his head in his hands. Any news from the Mountain King? The Nutcracker looks away. I asked you a question, sir. It... He's been incapacitated. What? There's a loud bang. Back to the battle, the stags try to scale the ridge, but the snowmen ball themselves and leap off the ridge, bouldering them over. The nutcrackers are firing, but they're still coming. One of the officers looks over. Right, lads! Fix bayonets! As the nutcrackers comply, one of the elves grabs him. What are you doing? Those bastards aren't going to stop. They're coming in waves and we're running low on ammo. He places his hand on the elf's shoulder. You're a bonny lad. Roderick! No! For a free North Pole! Once more into the breach, lads. Once more. The Nutcrackers cheer in unison as they go over the parapet. Some are immediately shot down as others clash with the stags. Alright. Come on, let's give him some cover fire. 
The elves open fire as the Nutcrackers charge down hill, impaling the stags as the rest turn and flee. Senna walks out and watches the Nutcrackers make their heroic charge down hill. God bless them, the entire lot. They're single-handedly saving the cause. Meanwhile, Krampus, who has been watching from a distance, is disconcerted. He grabs an aide. How did our men get turned back by a pack of wooden toy soldiers? Where are the reserves? The aide looks around. Answer me. We, we, we don't have any left, sir. What? We threw them all into attacking Hill 221 in that ridge just now, sir. Your strat- Our strategy didn't pan out. Krampus screams and throws the aid aside. God damn it. I create an army of super stag men. Increase strength and stamina, and yet you flee from elves, snowmen, and nutcrackers. What am I dealing with? A pack of whimpering simpletons? No. No. Krampus walks over to the terminal to see Black Peter on holographic projection. Peter. You cannot choose a more opportune time to gloat. Gloat? Oh, contrary, my friend. I come bearing glad tidings. What? We used the last of our reserves on that ill-fated attack. And now Santa has enough momentum to launch a counterattack, in case you haven't noticed. Well, that may not be the case. They feel the Earth shudder, and a violent breeze knock the remaining aides and soldiers. Krampus sees three APCs lumber into view. I am not in the mood for movies. And this isn't a projection. Alright, Oleg, do it. The lead APC opens fire. The Nutcrackers, now at the bottom of the ridge, are astonished as a single shot decimates their ranks. Sir! Quick! Enter your squares! What the devil is that thing? The commander looks over. Enter your squares! They form up and begin to open fire, but, as expected, it has no effect. As they try to scurry up the ridge, the APCs again open fire, destroying the Nutcrackers. One of them manages to scale the parapet, but as an elf grabs his hand, he listens to see the rest of the body is gone. Santa, horrified, waves his arm. Fall back! Fall back! The elves and the few nutcrackers and other soldiers begin an orderly retreat as the APCs continue firing. Krampus watches this, nodding approvingly. You sly fox. Well, I can't take all the credit. We have Kolonev to thank for this turn of fortune. And if I see him, I will kiss him. Alright boys, up the ridge. We won't have any trouble going forward. As they make it to the ridge, to see the bodies of nutcrackers, elves, and snowmen, Krampus picks his way through the wreckage as Black Peter joins him, followed by Russian soldiers. What a shame. Good men and women. What soldiers they could have made in our army. As part of the new order. Black Peter looks at him. I never pegged you for a sentimentalist, Krampus. I'm not. But... This call could have been avoided had you just acceded to our points and stepped aside. Relics sometimes don't know when they're no longer relevant. Sadly, sometimes it takes a little force to drive that point home. A Russian soldier walks over. Report. Sir, no sign of Santa Claus. Keep looking. And Yuri, do be discreet. We're 15 kilometers from the Canadian border, and I don't want them to catch wind of what we're doing. The soldier nods and runs off as Black Peter slaps his ally on the shoulder and walks off, leaving him to contemplate on the carnage that's just taken place. Back in the present, we cut to the lab where we see Luca and JJ looking at the metal when Lee walks around. So Jack, walking around isn't going to make you get to Animacon any faster. Dude, 
Did you pay over a hundred dollars for a three day pass? Uh, no. Then shut up. What's so great about Animacon? Oh, bro, don't ask him that. Lee walks over and gets into JJ's face. A full Japanese immersion experience. A sushi chef makes nigiri and sashimi right before your eyes. Right before your very eyes. When you walk through those doors, you're no longer in the United States. You are in Japan. And if you bought the three-day pass, guess how much you'd have to pay? Nothing! It's all included! Free kendo lessons! All sorts of stuff you could have buy in the US available for that three-day period. Manga that never reached these shores on sale! And anime creators who normally don't appear at conventions... Oh, alright, alright, I get it. I'm not finished. These are hermits, geniuses, gods, who do not mingle with mere mortals. Geniuses like these sequester themselves in order to create content so profound, so focused, so human, that Shakespeare just looks like an amateur. JJ, these are works that ought to be taught in schools because they examine the human condition so thoroughly that it'll make a grown man cry. Their studios are monasteries where there is a vow of silence as their hands create works of art. But somehow, some way, they have been coaxed to grace their presence for a few days in Raleigh. Raleigh, of all places. They won't appear at San Diego Comic-Con, New York Comic-Con, WonderCon, or anywhere else. JJ, it's like, it's like Spielberg, Lucas, Coppola, Scorsese, and Tarantino all in the same room and talking film and signing autographs and personally answering any questions you might have. Okay, dude, I get it. And now, that's been snatched away. Poof, gone. I will have to wait another year before I can experience this ever again. And I'm not sure if I'll be able to score tickets so early next time around. All because of some bullshit about people hating on Santa Claus. Jeez. I'm sorry I asked. It's alright. You didn't know. But now you do. And now you can see why I am in so much pain. Um... Sure? Well... If you're done being melodramatic, I found something. They walk over to see Luca press something on the computer, and the display lights up. While Suchek was giving a monologue that can give Hamlet a run for his money, I figured out that this came from a Russian APC. I was gonna suggest Russian. Me too. But that's the thing, gents. He shows satellite imagery. These machines were not produced in Russia. Lee stares at Luca. But they're Russian. Yes, but look. He shows them a city on the moon. The moon? These giant ass machines ripped from George Lucas's imagination came from the moon? Well, I analyzed the drop points and they were delivered a few days apart. The Russians themselves came from Siberia, but the weapons aren't terrestrial in origin. Well, I go through this runaround. Well, American and Canadian intelligence have been on high alert, and their navies have been patrolling the waters. And there was no way the Russians were going to transport them by sea. And they would be too heavy to transport on Earth. Well, yeah, if it's that big lump. And an orbital drop wouldn't necessarily draw suspicion. I mean, how many meteorites fall to Earth on a weekly basis? So they're assembling it on the moon. 
Only one way to find out. He presses a button. From the energy signature, it looks like it's coming from a production plant in Alta Vista, near the Lacus Dolores. It does have a sizable Russian presence, and they use it as a gateway to other positions in the solar system and beyond. So, we go to the moon and... what? Infiltrate the base and find out what they're planning to do next? Pretty much. Sweet. They look at Lee. Alright. I guess we're off to the moon. It cuts to the Hammersmith Lunar Port as people mill through the terminal. We see Lee, Luca, and JJ walk through the terminal as Luca looks at his phone. Woo! What a trip! And it was only like... 500 a pop? I don't know why you're complaining. Santa covered the costs. You see several soldiers standing near the terminal exit, guns drawn. You don't see that on Earth. I'm guessing there's a bit of dispute going on here. He looks up. And on the moon. They walk past the guards and eventually make it to another terminal where they see numerous domes and pods scattered throughout the lunar landscape. Getting anything, Mr. Spock? Well, we're gonna need to head north, like, yay or there. They head to a terminal where they see a solitary tower surrounded by concentric ring buildings beneath the canyon. The signal ends there? It's a bit conspicuous, don't you think? Well, whatever you think of it, that's where we need to go. Inside the facility, they don hazmat suits and proceed down the corridor. They take an elevator to the lower levels where they find themselves in a narrow chamber. As Lee and JJ walk among the machines, Luca accesses a terminal. Gotta say, I'm displaying the facility. Seriously? Thought there'd be more to it than just that. Do you think that they make small parts and then assemble them in Russia? Guys. Guys, come over here. They scurry over. A holographic projection lights up and they see numerous points all over the North Pole. Well, we know about the drop points, but what are they dropping? Well, we know what they're dropping. I get that. Let me finish. Where are their droppings? Luke and JJ look at him. You get the idea. Can't you key something? It requires an 8-bit access code, and I don't have it. Here, let me. Jujir removes the panel and hotwires it. Soon, the floor opens and a grain elevator rises up. You're welcome. Show off. They get in and head down to the lower levels where they see and hear people shouting. They merge to see an entire gallery filled with giant APCs and machines. They crouch behind a corner and watch as the machines are disassembled and the triangular panels lower and develop around them before they are lifted out. They hear a roar. So you like that answer your question? Yeah, and more than enough. Those drop points you found, Luca. They're being placed strategically to intercept any American or Canadian warship and they're equipped with some sort of EMP generator. If they're meant to disable any ship while giving machines enough time to disembark. Okay. But there's more to it. They're not just dropping, they're gonna... They gotta be doing something else besides being carrier ships. There's a pattern to them, but... Come on! They hear clicks and see they're surrounded by soldiers. Well, if all your theories fail, Luca. You can just ask. Luca pulls a face as they are led away. We find our heroes in a cell with a window overlooking the lunar landscape. Great. Not only did I miss one of the biggest events in anime, but now I'm stuck in a prison cell on the moon. I kind of like it. Me too. Ugh. Figures. You two, the weirdos. He peers out the window to see the Earth. I will sort of admit, it's a nice view. Given the circumstances. Seeing as there's no way to escape, they 
Might as well. And brought back to reality. The drop points. What about them? I, I, I think I figured it out. He points to the Earth. They're not forming around the North Pole, but closer to the Bering Sea near the American-Canadian border. And? Well, none of those drop points are anywhere near the North Pole. They're cutting through the Canadian wilderness. Then, how do you explain the attacks on Santa Claus? A diversion? Uh, look, how many of those APCs did we count in that hangar? Like, six? And from the terminal, there were six drop points. Oh, and the North Pole was attacked by three. So where did the other three go? Well, that's the question. But I think I have a theory. As they talk, the door opens and two soldiers step in and wave them. They proceed down the corridor and pass a launch site. The bay doors open and a dropship emerges. Now! He slugs one of the guards as JJ kicks another. Luca retrieves the fob and it removes the cuffs. One of the soldiers, angry, gets up and opens fire and hits the window. The three take off running as everything is sucked into space and manage to make it to an access quarter as the blast doors close and the alarm rings. Well, that went great. Now what? Lee looks around. We gotta get back to Earth. How? This place is gonna crawl with guards. Well, if not already. Lee walks over to the terminal map. That quarter we just escaped from? It's now cut off from the cells. If those guards are going to pursue us, they have to cross that corridor, which is now inaccessible. Well, we still need to get back to Earth. Yes, I get that point. Let me think. They hear gunfire in the distance. Do you mind thinking a little bit faster? Yeah, you'd think they'd be a bit more careful, seeing where we are. They scurry down the corridor and find a locker with hazmat suits. They don the suits and casually make their way to the launch site where they see soldiers running around. They make it to the catwalk and open a small hatch and enter. Lee looks around and JJ points up to a ladder curving upward. Ah, shit. I hate heights. Look on the bright side. The gravity here is one third of what it is on Earth. As Luca pulls a face, they proceed to climb the ladder and access another hatch where they find a capsule filled with tools, weapons, and spare parts. They proceed to dump the material and they feel a shudder. They strap themselves in as the, as the ship launches. As the drop ship lifts from the moon's surface, inside the capsule the three are thrown to the back. Oh god! It's like an elephant sitting on top of me! I've tried smoking for seven years, you get the same effect. Dude, you really need to stop. Presently, they feel the pressure lighten up, and the controls light up. Lee looks at them. Eh, alright. How do I pilot this thing? You can't. It's on autopilot. We're, uh, we're landing at a pre-selected location. Alright. So, you had a theory about the drop points? Lee grabs an oxygen mask connected to a tank. They all look at one another. One of us is going to have to go last. Rock, paper, scissors? What are you? Twelve? In here? Yes. Ugh. Alright, Luca. Seeing as you light one every three seconds, have the first puff. Sweet! I'm only doing this because you have some important info pertinent to our situation. Luca grabs a mask and inhales and hands it to JJ. The dropships are hitting pre-programmed coordinates off the American-Canadian coast. Now, since the North Pole isn't entirely in their scope, this leads me to think they're probably planning a military operation in that area. Like an invasion? Yeah, I'm leaning towards that. <coughs> Another thing is that one of the drop points is off the coast of Alaska. Right. Russia's going to invade the U.S. from Alaska? When he sees Luca's expression, his own changes. Shit. 
You really mean it. <coughs> I remember... <coughs> I remember an interview the Russian president did with the BBC two years ago. <coughs> he says something that the Russian Empire... He begins to cough. Well, he hands him the mask. <sighs> Has been denuded. He rambled on about how the Baltic state and Ukraine have been shorn from the Russian motherland. They've been saying that about Poland for years. But he said something that Russia had a hold of North America and sold it for a pittance. And Russia owned Alaska. So it stands to reason this could be a spearhead movement to try to reclaim it. Hmm. Worked in Crimea. Yeah. But they didn't drop giant APCs from the moon. And the, the dropships are equipped with a jammer. Well, scanners and radar will just get white noise. <laughs> and we're moving slow. To mimic a meteorite approaching Earth. So then any military radar would just dismiss it for some space junk. Well, wait. How did Russia get away with building these things on the moon anyway? That is a good question. How long is it until we reach Earth? Um... I think 36 to 72 hours? Well, he looks at the oxygen mask. Yeah. Guys, I've got a throbbing headache and I'm thinking we need to... Y you know. If it's what I think you're suggesting, uh, I'm all for it. As I settle in, Lee looks at the others. Before we all, you know, let's make it clear this isn't cuddling. We're in a tiny capsule, and there's not much space to move around. So if we happen to touch each other in a weird way, promise not to say a word? The others moan in response. At best, they were designed to hold one cosmonaut or three dogs. Uh, I'm not even gonna ask. What? As Lee blacks out, he sees Luca punch something in the computer before lying down. Meanwhile, Krampus and Black Peter are talking to an officer. How long ago did the alarm go off? An hour ago. Earth time. We were unable to capture them due to... The Unfortunate circumstances. Then what do you require of us? The next drop point is due in 36 hours projected at these coordinates. We assume they have stood away on this dropship and require your presence to greet them. I see. And interrogate them. That will not be necessary. You will hold them. Preferably intact until I can reach your location and escort them to our facility. And if they should resist, you will use non lethal methods to apprehend them. They can be quite, uh, how you say, feisty. But I doubt they will put much of a fight. Uh, Colonel. Yes. Just a quick question. The next drop is kilometers away from our forces are supposed to be for the next counteroffensive. That would take takes hours to get back. Kolonev grabs Peter. Do not presume to lecture me on military matters, Pisanta. Remember our arrangement. You were going to help us take the North Pole from Santa. Yes, but these are secondary compared to the main task. <coughs> you mean... <coughs> your affairs. Kolonev throws him to the ground. When we came to this arrangement, we would provide APCs in military personnel and equipment in exchange for your service. The way I see it, we have made less demands of you than the other way around. More APCs, more firepower, I hear you back day after day. Black Peter slowly gets to his feet. <coughs> He's... <coughs> Putting up more resistance than expected, Colonel. And our APCs will soften that resistance. My god. How hard can it be to crush elves and snowmen? 
Black Peter and Krampus exchange looks. Now, you will be at the drop points in 36 hours. Yes. <sighs> we will. And you will hold them. Krampus grits his teeth. Yes. Good. As he walks away, Black Peter rubs his neck. I don't know how you can tolerate that man. He's just a means to an end. That's all. Krampus stops him. But you've never wondered what they want out of this arrangement. No. I only know what I want. Krampus stares at him. And you've never wondered. Not for a second. Surely you cannot believe he is doing this out of the kindness of his heart. Careful, old friend. I hold you in the highest esteem, but I will not hesitate to turn you in if it hinders the larger task at hand. Krampus scowls. Just be at the drop point when those idiots show up and do as Kolonev says. The sooner we can get this business sorted out, the sooner we will assume control of the North Pole. Very well. I will be there. Back in the present, the bushwhackers are in the capsule. Shit. I'm out. Luca fires the last round. Yep, me too. JJ steps out and fires an RPG at a few of the stags and then hurries back in as they open fire. So, that's all three of us. Now what? Well, we shut the door, but they see that the door is broken off. Russian Space Agency. As Lee moves, the capsule rolls. Hey, hey, do you mind stopping that? Shut up! Shut up! I just got an idea. Y yeah? It will require everyone. Strap in. Ah, uh, not again. Krampus walks over to the capsule and raises his arm to signal a ceasefire. Bushwhackers. I will have words with you. What is he? Thor? No doubt you know that I am working with the Russian military to gain control of the North Pole. Yeah? What's new? Kolodev wants me to bring you three to him for interrogation. No doubt you've already seen what he has planned and what he will do to keep it confidential. There is no response from the capsule. If you will surrender, I will ensure safe passage, and that no harm comes to you. Lee pokes his head out. You have my word. Hmm... We'll pass. Do you know what he'll do to you once he's completed his interrogation? Yeah, dude. And we're still not taking your offer. Anyone who decides to be under the Russian thumb is it worth taking into consideration. Yeah, considering you have as little influence over the Russians as your friend Peter. Uh, where is he, by the way? Does he really leave lumps of coal for naughty children? Or has he upgraded to shit? Krampus waves his arm, and the stags raise their guns. Just remember, I gave you a chance. Well, it was pretty shitty. No offense. He turns to the others. Alright. In three, two, one. As the stags open fire, they hear a creak and then a roar. They see the capsule barrel towards them. Some get out of the way while others are knocked over. Krampus runs after it and grabs the rim, but is swung off. He watches as the capsule wobbles as it descends down the slope. He waves at his soldiers. After them! Now! The stags dash downhill in hot pursuit. Jiji hurls a few objects out of the castle, tripping the pursuers as the capsule slows down. Lee rams against the controls, but it doesn't do anything. Shit! Come on! You've got a few more yards to go! They hear the gunfire get closer. They get out, and as they do so, the capsule rolls a few more yards away. Seriously? I know, right? They continue running when they see a convoy approach. They take cover behind a boulder to see it is Russian. As they watch, they hear clicks around them and look to see Krampus with his men. Hey! You found us! You win a prize! Luca! 
tell the audience at home what he's won. Well, Crampy Crampy here wins an all-expense-paid trip to Florida where he will get to swim with the dolphins at SeaWorld, hang out with Mickey Mouse at Disney World, and enjoy a day with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And he will be driving the latest Tesla. In response, a soldier hits him with his gun. Lee helps him up. <coughs> oh, not a Tesla fan, huh? So, Jake, I don't think he likes Elon Musk. They see Kolonev walk over with his Russian soldiers. I'm thinking he's not a Bucks fan either. So, these are the unfortunate wretches Santa has hired. Well, gentlemen, I must congratulate you for your ingenuity. But this is a fight you cannot possibly win. Well, <laughs> reuniting the Empire does require a smokescreen, I imagine. Kolonev's lips curl. Krampus. Have these men placed in the truck and ensure they are placed in maximum security. I think these men are not the idiots as we've been led to believe. As they are handcuffed, Luca looks over at Krampus. Tell me something. Did you really think they were interested in your little squabble? Krampus glares at him. Take it from me. There's nothing more pathetic than a pawn who thinks he's the king. He glances at Kolonev. And a king knows the best way to win a war is to let the pawn think he's in charge. As they are led away, Krampus looks after him. A stag soldier walks over. What a silly metaphor. Krampus turns to him. No. Not at all. That man must be a sorcerer. To know my very thoughts. Santa is in his headquarters when an elf enters with an American and a Canadian officer. Ah, General Notice. Uh, General McKenzie. Santa Claus? Uh, I want to express my gratitude for your intervention. What they're doing is appalling. Uh, no need to thank us, sir. America owes it to you in the North Pole. But the data provided is a bit disconcerting. The data? Well, we received a transmission a few days ago from Alta Vista on the moon about several drop points. Yes, yeah, they're going to attack the North Pole in our positions. Well, that's it. He shows them the map. They're nowhere near you or your position. Santa looks at it carefully. Then what the hell is going on here? Sir! You want to see this? He runs out, followed by the generals, and they see Krampus walking to the fence. His hands are up. With your permission, we can interrogate him. No. No, there'll be no need for that. Let him pass. The soldiers stand down as Krampus walks past him and towards Santa. Krampus? I... I must have words with you. Whatever you need to say, you can say it in the open. Senna waves his hand. Are you sure, sir? Are you willing to take that risk? You'll be fine. They walk into the headquarters and Krampus closes the door. Well, what is it? Krampus ponders carefully. I believe I have made a terrible mistake. Senna sits down. I know. Those three... The ones Mariel brought to help you. They've been captured by Kolonev. I know. We're... I'm trying to find a way to save them. That's not the only thing. Whatever the Russians have planned, they want us out of the way. Santa looks up. I thought they were helping you with this little coup. As did I. But over the past few days, I've begun to suspect that things aren't exactly as I thought. Krampus, you've always been forward, but now you're hesitant. What's going on here? Well, I believe the Russians are using us. I suspect that they will eliminate us. All of us. Once we've served their purpose. And this is new? I've harbored these thoughts, but kept them to myself. 
Peter will never admit to them, and I suspect he's willfully refusing to see sense. But one of those bushwhackers said something that confirmed it. Someone who is not of our cause suspected the same thing. And that is enough to make me wonder. And do you still want to take over the North Pole? I... I... I don't know. It was all Peter's idea, really. This was his operation the entire time. And sure, I agreed with some of his points, but... This is too high a price to pay. Santa walks over. Join us, Krampus. We now have the Canadian and American military on side. With this info, we can take the fight to Peter and his friends and turn the tide. Uh, I don't know. Krampus. How long will you wrestle with your conscience on this? Y you know this is wrong. As Krampus makes for the door, Santa stops him. You can do this, though. Krampus turns to him. Find out what they're planning. If you choose to act either for or against, I will not blame you. Yet consider this. Krampus nods and walks away. The generals join him. Well? What did he say? He's worried. I asked him to find out what they were planning next and relay it to us. Willie, though. Santa looks after him. I hope for the best, but we need to plan for the worse. Well, that's all fine in Jim Dandy, Santa, but this is war. I mean, you, you said it yourself earlier. And anyway, they've got three Americans detained. We, we ought to do something to get them. They did risk their lives to get the information to us. Meanwhile, in a hidden facility, we see the bushwhackers are hanging from the ceiling as a burly soldier punches Lee. Kolonev smokes a cigarette. I will ask you again. Did you tell anyone about our drop ships? Lee spits blood in his face. Kolonev wipes it away and slaps him. My, 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 Mr. Suchak. You are a credit to your people. Ever defiant. A shame about Warsaw. Ruined and burned. Go eat a bag of dicks! The soldier punches him in the stomach. Kolonev grabs him by the hair and yanks his head up. You are the leader of this group. What did you transmit to Earth? Who did you send it to? What transmission? Do not lie to me. We traced it from our base on Alta Vista. How do you know it was me? It could have been Larry and Curly over there. Them? One of them is certifiably insane and the other is too young and stupid to know anything. Ha <laughs> ha, oh, JJ. <laughs> he called you insane. Go fetch the clamps. I believe even Poles cannot tolerate losing a few tools and fingers. Well, he struggles against the restraints as Kolonev laughs. <laughs> Hey, Colonel, why don't you step out and smoke for a bit? You've earned it. You know, it's the soldier who punches Luca. <laughs> Seriously? My old man packed a bigger wallet than you. You hit like a squirrel. Oh, my dear boy. Just remember, had it not been for us, your family would not exist. They would have died. One... By one. Luca grins. Highly unlikely. <laughs> Is everyone doing that today? Uh, not me. A soldier knocks and enters and whispers something to Kolonev. He turns to the prisoners. Gentlemen. If you will excuse me. He grimaces and leaves the room. Lee turns to the others. Luca, can't you like... Do something to get us out of here? H how? I can barely move myself. You're super skinny. You could wiggle right through. Suchik, I can't! 
He lowers his head. So, that transmission... It was a set of coordinates to NORAD. Huh? What, you're... No, you were gonna rat me out to the Russians, aren't you? Look, I'm sorry, but I've been turned into liver mush for the past 20 minutes, and you two barely have any bruises on you. I think he chipped a tooth. Look, man, at this point, we need an out. And if this is our ticket out, then so be it. Oh, I see how it is. This is what loyalty looks like then, right? This is survival. Unbelievable. JJ, can, can, can you believe this? I mean, really? It too, JJ? Yeah. Man, you guys suck. Krampus arrives at the base where he is stopped. I must speak with Kolonov. No one has passed this point. Krampus growls and makes a move. The soldiers draw their weapons. I will not be ordered like a, around like a common dog. Where is Kolonov? The soldier makes a face and motions for the others to lower their weapons. He motions for Krampus to follow and they walk down numerous corridors where he sees they're empty. A base the size must be crawling with soldiers. He expects a response, but the soldier goes to a door and knocks. It opens, and the soldier leaves Krampus there as he enters and closes it. A minute later, the soldier returns with Kolonov. What is it? What, what, what do you want? I need to speak with you. Well, go on. I've heard rumors recently regarding our arrangement and need, needed to confirm them. What rumors? Is it true that your aim isn't to help us take the North Pole from Santa? And is it true that you're just using us and will dispose of us when we're done? In answer to your questions, no and no. Both no's. We are firm in our commitment to your cause. You have been deviating from our pre-selected locations, though. The past week, we've suffered numerous casualties, and you only delivered the APCs just three days ago. We would have taken control by now had you fully committed to the campaign. Kolonev glares at him. And have been more forthcoming about your strategy. You ask for weapons. I supplied them. You did not ask for men until a few days ago, and even then we gave more than enough. What? You want entire Russia to come to you? Krampus growls. Careful. Do not presume to threaten me, beast. I have enough men to subdue you and enough weapons to make you kneel, if I wish. As he says this, a soldier salutes him and hands him a note. Kolnev sighs and turns to Krampus. <sighs> this is the last conversation we have. If there is anything else to discuss, then have your friend Peter meet with my liaison. We are done. As he leaves, Krampus looks at the door. He walks over and knocks and it opens. He walks in and sees the bushwhackers tied up. The soldier draws his weapon, but Krampus claws it. He then walks over and rips their chains. They fall to the floor. Wha what Can you stand? Luca and JJ help Lee to his feet. We, we can make it. Good. Get out, now. They look at him and proceed to leave without question. Luca turns around. The base is undermanned. You should be able to get out undetected. I passed the hangar earlier. Grab a truck and head southwest. The Americans and Canadians will meet you. As they leave, Krampus sees the soldier isn't quite dead. As he's coughing up blood, Krampus grins. You have been naughty, haven't you? As the soldier tries to back away, Krampus bears his fang and lunges for the man. Back at the base, an elf, along with several Canadian-American soldiers, stand at the checkpoint as the truck approaches. Alright guys, heads up! As they raise their weapons, the truck comes to a stop. They walk over and JJ steps out with his hands up. It's the bushwhackers, don't, don't shoot! 
As they help Lee out of the truck, General Notice runs over. Gentlemen, so, you got my message? Yeah, Senate confirms our suspicions. The Russian ambassador's been denying over and over again, but that there aren't any plans to retake Alaska, but the coordinates and the evidence presented here tells otherwise. How many more drops are there? Three more, maybe? We stood away in one, and God knows where that's got to. The, the hangar had seven of those APCs ready for launch. He looks over at Lee. General Notice follows his gaze and waves his arm. Alright, someone get a medic! As Lee is led away, the general looks at him. He didn't say a word? Well, can't tell anything if he doesn't know anything. What happens next? If those things really are out there, then they are planning to take Alaska by force, and then we need some serious firepower and careful coordination. As they head into the headquarters, Santa runs to the bushwhackers. It was Krampus. He freed us. Santa nods. Well, I did get through. It, is he with you? No, he stayed behind, but there's another thing. The generals enter. He said the base is undermanned. When we escaped, we barely met anyone. They're probably guarding the drop sites then. Why can't he let Krampus and his men do it? I mean, we met a whole crowd of them earlier. It could be they aren't equipped to handle those APCs. Or he doesn't trust them. He looks up. That just might be the opportunity then. You think Krampus might be persuaded to join us, Santa? I don't know. Peter still exerts a lot of influence in this alliance, and Krampus appears to be no more than an accessory. So he's useless. I wouldn't say that. He looks on as Lee is loaded onto a stretcher and is led away. A little while later, Lee wakes up to find himself in the infirmary. He sees Luca and JJ. Ugh. Tell me... The past 24 hours was a nightmare? He tries to sit up but winces in pain. That answer your question? No, I guess not. Where are we? Oh, at HQ. The American and Canadian military got my message. Uh-huh. And? And we're suiting up for the next attack. Lee stares at him. We're heading to the next drop site, and we're going to jam the signals. Yeah? Well, the idea is the dropships are using tracker to find beacons at, the, at those locations so they can land. If we destroy those beacons, then the ships will... I think I get the idea. As he gets out of bed, the others look at him. What are you doing? What does it look like? I'm coming with. You... Took a beating back there, dude. You should rest. I did in the truck. And I feel like fluffy. Ugh. As he collapses onto the bed, a medic runs over. Now where do you think you're going? To help out with whatever it is those two are gonna do. You've got a fractured rib and some lesions on your head. You could have been concussed. I want to keep you here for at least 24 hours for observation. Doctor's right. We'll be fine, dude. As they leave, Lee looks at the medic. On the tundra, we see Luca, several elves, nutcrackers, and soldiers scurry to a small ridge. Anything? Hang on a sec. These beacons are messing with the scanner. Is it like that? They see a blinking red light. They hurry over to see three spread out in a small triangular pattern. An awfully tight fit. That's not a precise drop, but it should give the drop ship an approximation as to where to land. Even with the pre-programmed coordinates, it still needs to find the beacons to link up. How? He smacks the scanner. Hang on a sec! He walks over and prods the terminal and inspects carefully. Uh. It's kind of like how when it lands, the beacon will emit a signal. And then the thing opens and out pops the APC. 
Guys, this thing is both a key and a beacon. He looks at the others. Soviet era technology, I imagine. Right, who? He proceeds to smash the first beacon, and the others follow suit. They hear a roar and look up to see an object heading towards them. They flee to the truck and drive off. They see the dropship land, but without the signal, it remains in place. You got the trap set? The soldier pulls out a detonator. You bet. He presses the button, and there's an explosion. The ship keels over. An APC crawls out, but then collapses as debris from the ship impales it. Radio the others. Let them know how it worked. On to the next one. Back at the Russian base, Kolonev is fuming as the soldier runs over. What is it? Sir, it, it's, it's destroyed. Kolonev turns around. What? It, it appears to have been destroyed upon impact. Idiot! Those ships were designed to take up thousands of newtons of force. It was not destroyed upon impact. He looks at the scanner and sees another beacon go out. Bring him in. Krampus is brought in chains. Krampus, my friend. I have a problem I'm hoping you can solve for me. Krampus spits in response. We have three drops. The first one was destroyed half an hour ago, and the second one just went offline. Now, would you happen to know anything about that? He remains silent. Kolonev walks over and puts a gun under his chin. It wouldn't be your new friends. How can three men destroy those things? They can if they destroy the beacon and jam the signal so they cannot release the APCs. You do want to take over North Pole, yes? When Krampus doesn't respond, he nods and the soldier butts him with his rifle. As he lays on the floor, Kolonev walks over. I have a perfect memory. I can tell you what I had for lunch on June 4th, 1987. Where I met my wife. The name of the priest who performed my son's chrismation. And the terms and conditions of a certain agreement. He kneels down. As I recall, the terms were generous. We will provide weapons and manpower for your little scrape, however insignificant it was. And all we ask is that you perform the given tests. When asked! He kicks Krampus as he says this. Merely simple tasks! Merely to follow orders! You are a beast of burden with the gift of speech, but still a beast of burden. Animals such as yourself were made to obey. He kicks him in the face. Why can't you just obey? Krampus grabs his foot and tosses him. The soldiers aim their guns at him as Kolonev stands up. A beast of burden. Black Peter enters the room. Ah. Peter. Good. Krampus tries to get up, but a soldier pins him down. There have been recent developments that have hampered our efforts. Your associate here decided not to honor our agreement, and as such we are unable to deliver additional materials for your war effort. He has become a liability. He hands him a gun. Now tell me. Will you uphold the terms of our agreement? Or will you be joining your bestial friend? Krampus looks at Peter. He then looks at Kolonev. You know, this was wrong, didn't you? Black Peter's lips curl. Oh boy. I don't know what you're talking about. He pulls the trigger and shoots him in the head. As Krampus lies there bleeding, Kolonev congratulates him. Well, you are a soldier of the cause. As the soldiers carry Krampus' corpse away, Kolonev brings up a projection. We have four drops. One of them made it and is being assembled, the one with our stowaways, and to have gone offline. 
And the fourth, do in six hours. I need you and your men to protect the drop site. Why not your men? Russian soldiers on Canadian soil. Ah. Point taken. I will have my men ready within two hours. You have one. This is imperative and you must not let the last drop be destroyed in any manner. The Americans and Canadians have already destroyed two of them and no doubt they will be preparing to sabotage the last drop. You must stop them at all cost. Understood. Black Peter nods. When we are done, you will earn your reward. You will have the North Pole all to yourself. Black Peter looks at the pool of blood on the floor. Good. I never was one for sharing anyway. Good. Oh, and those three interlopers who escaped the facility. You will leave them to me. But if they resist, use your discretion. Understood. As Peter leaves, Kolonev looks at a map of Alaska with the Russian flag on it. Soon we will take back what was stolen from us so many years ago. And the West will learn just how wrathful we can be. They will not dare to strike us if we have a foothold in their own backyard. At the third drop site, we see JJ and his team peering over the ridge. They see the beacon blinking. As they move forward, there is a shot and they see one of the soldiers keels over. JJ looks around, but sees nothing. It's an ambush! They take cover as more men open fire on their position. Black Peter stands up and fires a flare into the sky. JJ tries to return fire, but is pinned down and he turns to an elf. Is, is there any way you can get to that beacon? The elf looks up. Seems like 50 meters or so. Can you try to deactivate it? The elf nods. As they get up to run, they are shot dead. You're not going anywhere near that beacon, bushwhacker. Even if you stand up, we will put you down. Jiji appears over the ridge as more of the stag men advance. Alright, lay down a suppressive fire. Jiji and his team open fire, but it doesn't appear to hinder the stags. One of them leaps over and kills a soldier, but JJ fires, hitting him in the head. Take six men, secure the beacon. I'll deal with the bushwhacker myself. One of the stag men nods as Black Peter waltzes over, shooting an elf that tries to stop him. JJ continues firing when the gun is shot out of his hand, and he looks over to see Peter leering at him. There will be no escape for you. As he says this, there's a loud roar and they see the dropship crash before them. Peter looks at him. I will give you marks for effort. But you haven't won anything. As he says this, there's another shot and Black Peter kneels down to see Luke and his team arriving. You were saying? Everyone out! We accomplished our goal. Luca runs over to JJ. <laughs> we're too late. They secured the beacon. Yeah, I can see that. And the drop timetables moved up. We estimated we had four hours, but they must have activated their contingency. He turns to see the APC stand up and begin lumbering towards them. Luca and JJ run towards the truck as the soldiers lay down a suppressing fire and the truck speeds away. Back at HQ, the generals and Santa are in a meeting when the teams return. Report. Sir, we couldn't secure the third drop. They... They laid out an ambush. Damn! The drop came in three hours earlier than expected. Now they're getting desperate. They know we're onto them. And Black Peter himself was there. Ready to say hello. Was Krampus with him? JJ shakes his head. I haven't heard from him in the past 24 hours. You, you don't think. Did he leave with you guys? No. He stayed behind to cover our escape. Alright, then we have to assume the worst. The Russians figured out he helped you guys escape and saw him as a liability. Makes sense. So, we now have two ABCs dropped from the moon in the past 48 hours now. What do we do? Well, we can use that to our advantage. How? 
We lure the APCs to our base as a diversion and attack the Russian base itself. Do they have any more drops? From the communication we've intercepted, that's pretty much it. They've been exposed and now know they know we know. So, General, what do we do? The two ABCs lumber towards the base as JJ leans on a machine gun. He looks around as General McKenzie peers out the binoculars. Alright everybody, look sharp. ETA 3 minutes. One of the APCs opens fire, hitting a terminal and killing a few soldiers. Steady, man. Steady. You're not expecting us to fight those things with small arms. We're not fighting those things. They can see through the mist, several figures emerge. Alright, let's show them what a Canadian welcoming committee can do. Jiji looks up. Come on, guys. Meanwhile, a truck pulls up at the checkpoint at the base where a Russian soldier stops them. He looks in and checks the papers before waving them in. As they make it into the terminal, they see three more APCs being prepared. Lee and his team hurry out with guns drawn. Alright, we find Kolonev, hold him, and we shut down those APCs. Got it? They all nod and hurry out. We see a figure walking around looking after the party and then scurries to one of the APCs. As he walks in, he sees two pilots checking the systems. What have you been? We need to go. No. The figure shoots both pilots in the heads and hurls them out of the escape hatch. He then removes his helmet to reveal it's Luca. I was powdering my nose. Uh, need to look nice for a special occasion like this. Now. He begins pressing buttons and the machine lurches forward. Hang on, fellas. I'm a coming. Meanwhile, at HQ, JJ is firing at the advancing men. Black Peter is waving his men forward. Keep moving, you slags! Overwhelm them! A stag leaps over the parapet to scalp JJ, but a nutcracker impales him. The nutcracker is then blown apart by a grenade, and JJ draws his breath. Aim for the head! Aim for its head! One of the gunners is preparing to take aim when he leans forward. The stag runs over and grabs the controls, but JJ runs over and tackles him to the ground. The stag gets the upper hand, but JJ reaches for a dagger and plunges it into the stag's chest. He then crawls onto the turret and aims for the APC's head and fires. At the base, Colonel looks at the monitor. Sir, one of the APCs is down. Sh should we send? No. He then turns around. Yes. Sir, one of the APCs in the hangar has been activated. I know, it's on its way to Alaska. He hears a beep. What? Inside the APC, Luca hears a beep and presses the button. Where are you going? You're supposed to rendezvous with the strike force. You're deviating from the count- Luca shuts off the radio. Always with the negative waves, Moriarty. Always with the negative waves. Back at HQ, we see the guns have been destroyed and numerous bodies lying around. General McKenzie is severely wounded. <coughs> Fall back! <laughs> Fall back! JJ runs over. Come on, I got you. N no, 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 no. Just, just, just leave me, just... Just leave. JJ grabs him and waddles away as the APC crushes one of the buildings. More soldiers rush in as Black Peter surveys the carnage. Sir, we have them on the run. I'm aware of that. He turns to the destroyed APC behind him. Find Santa. And bring him to me. And the Americans and Canadians? Dispose of them. I want no survivors. The APC lumbers forward, firing. As JJ carries General McKenzie, hears a shot and sees McKenzie's been hit in the head. He lowers him down and feels a gun press against his head. Well, isn't this fortunate? Eh, don't turn around. I hate you, Bushwhacker. I hate you and your friends. I hate you for forcing me to kill an old friend, all because you made him weak. Are you gonna talk or shoot me? 
Before he can say anything else, there's a loud blast and sees the APC collapse. JJ uses the opportunity to punch Black Peter and shoot him in the knee as the APC crashes to the ground. He sees another APC lumber forward and he takes aim with his gun. What am I even doing? As the APC draws near, the hatch opens and Luca pops out. Figured it was you. Lee wouldn't let you on his team? Nah, I improvised. JJ nods. He then hears chatter on his radio. Hello? JJ! Can you get over here? What happened? Uh... At the base, we see Lee and his team pinned down with a few soldiers lying dead near the control room. It looks like they knew we were coming. They activate the other APCs. Whoever took the first one will return to save these wretches. Go! Yeah... So there's that... Before JJ can say anything else, he sees the APC lumber off. Help's on the way, good buddy. Meanwhile, Lee grabs a discarded rifle and opens fire, kill killing a Russian soldier. He gets up and runs to the other side, where an elf is sheltering behind a dead nutcracker. He looks at her leg to see it badly mangled. He kneels down and begins to apply pressure. Can you move? She nods weakly. She tries to stand up, but collapses. He sees a pool of blood around her. He hands her the rifle and rips off a piece of cloth and ties it around her leg. Stay there, alright? I want you to fire on any Russian who moves past this point. Got it? She nods. Lee grabs two handguns and runs out, firing them and dives behind the trash can to see the commander. So, this is going to plan. Colin, I've mentioned an APC went off grid. He, you know anything about that? I have an idea. But, I'm not sure if we'll be around to figure it out. Meanwhile, outside the base, two APCs are online and begin lumbering forward to form a defensive pattern as Russian soldiers take their position. Suddenly, there is a blast that hits the ground, sending the soldiers all over the place. The APCs open fire as Luca, inside the rogue APC, returns fire. Ah, shit! He maneuvers to avoid the fire, but is rocked backwards by a blast. He tries to hit them, but cannot get a good aim. Ugh. Don't tell me. They knocked out the targeting scanners? He grits his teeth. Alright, then we'll do this mano a mano. He pushes the ABC forward and clashes with the first one. There's a struggle and Luca aims the cans at the legs and fires. One of the legs collapses and the APC falls and Lucas steps on, its, on the head. HA <laughs> HA! Score one for the North Pole! His victory celebration is short-lived as the second APC hits him, sending him to the ground. He scurries back to the controls to see it smoking. No, 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 come on, buddy, hang, hang, hang in there. It lurches forward. Yes! I knew you had it in you! <laughs> Uh-oh. He sees the second APC has caught onto his idea and is now ramming him. He pushes forward, but to no avail. He can see the pilots making gestures, and he gives them the bird. He grabs a gun from the corner and shoots the glass before firing at the pilots. They return fire, and it hits him, and he falls to the ground. Oh no. That's not good. He sees he is bleeding from his abdomen. He leans against the console and peers over to see the pilot still working to push his APC over. He takes aim and kills one of them before the other can react. He shoots the second pilot. <laughs> Score one for. He sees everything is spinning. He grabs the controls and begins to pilot the APC towards the main building. Inside, we see Lee lying on the ground as Kolnev stands over him, pointing his gun. It is fitting, yes. A pole is to die at the hands of a Russian. Screw you. Vulgar and defiant. But that is all you have left. Your friends are dead and might have overrun the North Pole. And Alaska will be ours again. There's a thunderous crash and we see the APC collapse. Kolnev turns to see Luca lying there, bleeding out. Shit. Kolnev turns around. The last of a dying breed. He raises his gun. Das Vidania. 
Willie closes his eyes and there's a bang. He opens his eyes to see Kolonev bleeding and falls over. To his surprise, he sees Luca leaning against the wall, holding a gun with his left arm around his torso. He, he really doesn't know when to shut up, does he? He collapses to the ground and Lee crawls over and grabs him. Luca! Buddy! Hey! You there? And breaking news, the Russian president has recalled his ambassadors to Canada and the United States following the incident at the North Pole. For those of you unaware, the Russians were conducting a clandestine military operation to invade and to occupy Alaska as part of their imperial reclamation agenda. UN monitors are expected to visit the lunar city of Alta Vista next week over the construction of APCs which, if true, would be a violation of the 1998 Lunar Militarization Treaty signed by the leaders of 30 nations who have settlements or facilities on the moon. In addition, Santa Claus, the leader of the North Pole, is expected to make a trip to New York to make a speech before the UN. No doubt there will be a clamor to see jolly old Saint Nick even though Christmas is technically two months away. As the anchor talks, we see so Russian soldiers being marched out of the base with their arms up while Santa is shaking hands with General Notice. We see medics take Luca to the infirmary with Lee and JJ in tow. In the infirmary, the medic looks over at him. You three just can't stand out of trouble, can you? First you, and now your friend. Yeah, we do have a thing for getting into scrapes. Oh, will he be alright? Yeah, he lost a lot of blood and suffered from some contusions. Surgeons managed to patch him up. A lot of trauma, but he'll pull through. He'll need to be under observation for a few days. As they listen, Santa and General Notice walk in. How's he doing? Uh, nothing that chicken soup and some R&R &R can't fix. I'll make sure he gets all the help he needs. It, it's the least I can do. Thank you. Gentlemen, you did a phenomenal job. He looks at a sedated Luca. I'm proud to have served alongside you. All of you. H happy to help. He salutes them and leaves with Santa. A soldier enters. Are right, you boys ready to go home? What about him? We'll look after him, I promise. As they head to the hangar, the same elf approaches Lee. Thank you, Lee. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. She hands him a device. What's this? A time dial. A gift from the Palantir to the North Pole, from centuries past. Technically not supposed to have it, but he did save us. And considering the circumstances under which we sought your help. Yeah. I'm sorry, the who? Just say a date, and give a time, and twist the dial. And what happens next? She gives him a kiss and walks away. Lee stands there for a second and hurries onto the plane. As he looks at it, he sees JJ has dozed off. He draws the dial closer to his lips. September the 4th, 2017, 9 in the morning. He twists the dial. At first nothing happens and he feels the plane shudder and shake as it hits turbulence. He sighs as JJ turns over and continues to snore. Okay. The plane fills with golden light and suddenly he finds himself in his apartment with his luggage. He looks at his phone and sees that he's back at that time. Wow. Trippy. As he says this, the elf appears. He shows her the dial and she nods and vanishes. Huh. What a useful tool. I could learn to like. He looks down to see it is gone. Knew it was too good to be true. Flash forward to Christmas Day. The three wake up in their individual apartments and scurry to their living rooms to find presents under the tree. Lee opens the box and peers inside. Alright! Rare Japanese whiskey! Allegedly the only brand fit for the Emperor himself! Luca opens the box and grins. <laughs> what do you know? A 1963 Rolex Submariner. And it's on a Bond NATO strap. Man, I... 
given up all hope of ever finding this. A three-year subscription to Hulu. Huh. I was hoping for Netflix. They each read the card attached. Aww. All in a day's work. <sighs> Should have asked for a movie deal or something. In the ruins of the Russian base, we see a figure shambling in. As he draws closer, we see it's Black Peter, who has survived being shot and crushed by debris. He walks to the terminal and sees a puddle of dried blood. As he draws his breath, he hears something. He holds still, fingers his gun, and then turns to see a Russian officer. He lowers his gun. Didn't think there was anyone left. The officer smiles. Shouldn't you be on your way to Moscow? Or don't align with Moscow? Really? Then who? He presents a medallion with the Anubis insignia. My calling is... Higher. <laughs> you, I have observed, feel the same way. Come off it. This... He waves his arm dramatically. This is where ambition has landed me. Ambition is not the culprit. You have directed it towards transient goals. He steps forward. I can offer you... Something more. I present you with... Proposition. What do you say? Black Peter points the gun at his head and then scoffs before lowering it. Good. I see we have... Understanding. The Epilogue. In Kiev, in the intelligence office, a man walks down the corridor and knocks on the door. He opens and enters to see a woman sitting at her desk. Yes. Uh, excuse me, Minister. He hands her the file. She opens it and reads carefully. Are you sure? He nods. The Americans and Canadians thwarted the attack, but there were four men who influenced the President and pushed for operation. They were the ones who helped finance machinery in the attack, and I suspect that they are the ones we truly need to target. And we know for sure who these men are. The man nods. Without any question, Minister. Should we alert them? For certain. But also... The woman turns her screen around to reveal the bushwhackers. Pavel, do you know who these are? He studies the screen. No, not really. Our intelligence informs us that it was the North Pole who first approached them. They infiltrated Russian installation on Alta Vista and they let attack that thwarted Russians. We may have use for them. Uh, are you sure? The woman nods. Inform our liaison, Mr. Mizinski. He will need to get in touch with CIA and also speak with them. She points to the screen. Whether they realize it or not, they have stepped into a much larger war, and we will need every ally we can procure. Understood. As he leaves, she reviews the file. On the folder, it reads, Diadoki. And that will do it for the Christmas special, The Way to Eternity. Um, just a heads up, um, Season 1 of The Bushwhackers will conclude next month, um, and we'll... Most likely, I will be doing a, um, will be doing two episodes for that Monday. After that, the Bushwhackers will go on hiatus and will return sometime around March with the Diadoki, where the Bushwhackers target and go on a kill mission to eliminate the four oligarchs who were responsible for the Russian invasion of Alaska. So, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. There will be a ton of new content coming out for 2023. Um, more behind, there'll be a podcast about behind the scenes of the Bushwhackers. There will be limited series. There will be more essays, more Fantasy Fridays, Coffee Soup gets even raunchier, and I may, may, just possibly may, write a song about vasectomies. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, help the channel grow, and as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a safe and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, and I'll see you on the other side. Take it easy.